What you just heard was Rob Zombie with Living Dead Girl. And you'll listen to the J-Red Show on 9.7, the Music FM. As always, if you have requests, hit me on my Twitter at J-Red Show. If you want to talk to me or anything, hit me on Twitter at J-Red Show. We'll start with the Buffalo Sabres. Um, they traded Evander Kane to the San Jose Sharks for a first, 2019 first-round pick, a conditional 2020 fourth-round pick, and for Daniel O'Regan. Fans are understandably frustrated. Um, I get why they're like this. The, the Sabres have been spinning their wheels for years, and now it feels like they're taking a step backwards. We really wanted to get get a first round draft pick, but it's a conditional, so we gotta hope that San Jose does well in the playoffs. Either win the Stanley Cup or re sign Evander Kane. For me personally, I'm actually kinda happy. Um, I get why the fan the face is frustrated. I get why they're down. But I have to say I'm pretty happy, all things considered. Um. Um. I, there's really not much event uh, Botterill could have really done to improve this team. I mean, yes. I, I mean, we got a conditional pick instead of a full first round pick. So, if that if you're down on that, I get it. But there's really not much Bottle could do. He he was left in kind of a mess. And O'Regan helps Rochester. And Bottle expressed the importance of building a winner in Rochester before building a winner in Buffalo. And Rochester needed help. They have been in a um, slump for like a month. They said on the NHL Network that the Sabres got hosed by the Sharks. I don't think so. Um, Oregon's numbers are decent, but he's far from a one-dimensional player with a ton of off-ice baggage. So not Oregon. Yes, Evander Kane's numbers are decent, but he's a very one-dimensional player with a ton of off-ice baggage. He's very predictable with the puck, and in the offensive end, and he's a total liability. As far as backhanding goes, it's probably, he's probably too old for a coaching staff to try to clear up with those flaws in this game. Um, so, I'm glad they got Evander Kane off. I mean, the roster, I mean, but I get why fans are frustrated. I thought they did clear away rosters. I thought they did a, um, about about the Amherst and the AHL. I thought they did away with clear day rosters a couple of years ago in the AHL. The trade deadline is next Monday, so um, interesting point man WGR this day. When asked about the value of these guys, Nylander came up. The take was that things overall are pretty good down in Rochester this year, and after the mess they were last year. Specifically, they said it was that was Cal O'Reilly would want it out and had a huge negative effect on the locker room. I did not know that. And that Nylander was his roommate last year. So what positive effect do you think it had on him? Because of his age, it sounded like he's going to definitely go get another pass this year. It was also mentioned that Coach, Lam- the coach Dan Lambert was inexperienced and was added to the disaster last year. The story is that Cal O'Reilly wanted to get out of Rochester because he was stuck with Nylander, who couldn't do anything on his own, and O'Reilly wanted out. Lambert seemed like a nice guy, but this was like Biles on Buffalo. He was just supposed to give it much. Technically, the clear day roster thing is a, of, is, technically the clear day roster is a thing of the past. NHL, NHL players have been rostered at the NHL trade line to be eligible. Um, as far as the Amherst go, like they've struggled for a month. Fashu's been struggling. Bailey's been struggling. Pretty much the whole team's been struggling. So a, a lot of Amherst fans are hoping to move on from some of those guys. But they should be very happy with the acquisition of, Ore- of Oregon. Um, I have no confidence that Hudson Fashu will improve, though. Bailey could be a big plus if he plays like he did over the weekend. Nealon is also a strange agent. Maybe he'll flash some of his talent. Maybe he won't. So Rodriguez, um, so Rodriguez will not be eligible for the playoffs. It was a long shot. It was a long dream shot that Amherst fans had. He could still change, but it's very unlikely. The Sabres haven't made any official announcements yet. 
Oregon still has to be assigned here as well as the paper. Hit me on Twitter at jredshow. Another trade that happened in NHL. Boston gets Rick Nash. And once again, the luck of Boston sports. A few years ago, a while ago, I said the Bruins were the, te- the Boston team least likely to win a championship and continue the string of Boston sports success. But now they seem like the most likely. They are loaded up with Rick Nash. It, and for a while, it seemed like they were getting old. They were ready to come down. They needed, they looked, like they, it looked like they needed a long rebuild, like what the Sabres are going through. But they're, but Char is still playing great. And look at their idiotic emergency teardown in 2014 when everyone was laughably incredulous. And says that they instantly remounted and been a playoff caliber team with their deep prospects contributing. When they went off board for three consecutive firsts in 2014, I was rolling on the ground. But of course, the joke's on Buffalo and not on Boston, as usual. Even the best player in Bergeron was a lucky hit in round two, and Pentanek was a lucky hit in the crapshoot end of the first round. They, then they traded all the top kids and top picks for questionable returns and still go on the continue. It's still going to continue to be competitive. What is with Boston sports? <laughs> I remember the, the Boston Red Sox tearing it down in 2012. You're thinking, up, oh, they're going to have a long rebuild. <coughs> and then in 2013, they win the World Series. It is ridiculous. Let's talk about who the winners and the losers were. Um... Rick Nash is definitely the winner. Um, Eric Carlson, Ottawa. I don't know why the Senators get rid of Carlson. Um, well, I, I gotta, if it's good for Carlson, I guess it's good for Ottawa because he's the only player worth watching that team. It, the Senators quickly went from one win away from the Stanley Cup Finals to a complete mess. Carlson was expected to move on, but I guess they, I'm surprised he wasn't. The Stars needed a, a Dallas Stars are losers that in the draft tra- trade line. They needed a veteran winger. They needed a veteran winger and um, and um, Jim Jill Manager said Jim Jill Manager Jim Neal says we didn't start. We started to see that they were very high. Unless they they got uh, some major injury that they would be forced to okay make a trade. I didn't think they'd be doing anything, but the lineup could have been significantly bolstered by. Uh, any of the left wingers who moved at the trade deadline. It's hard to ignore what the rest of the Washington con- contenders did to boost the Stanley Cup chances. The Jets had a great off trade deadline. I think this is going to be the first time in the history of the Winnipeg Jets and Atlanta Thrashers franchise um, that they're going to win a playoff series. They started to look like losers at the deadline. Um, but um, they've been searching at the playoff. They've um, but they could really use center depth, and while it appeared they were going to lose out on everyone, they got Derek Prasard, Mark Lester, and Thomas Plakenik. Um, and then they got, and then the Blues dangled Paul Stastny, and the Jets swooped in. Stastny had not been mentioned as a trade target at all, and the Blues were supposed to be buyers, not sellers. Um, Jail mentioned Doug Armstrong told reporters that he had no intention of trading Stastny until his recent team's recent six-game slide. A player with Stanley's experience and talent in the faceoff circle plotted the third line. We like the Jets a lot more right now. Um, the, Fl- the Philadelphia Flyers. It's not that it's not that they had a bad trade deadline. They had previously addressed their biggest area of need, goaltending, by acquiring Peter, Peter Merzik for the Detroit Red Wings. But the Philadelphia didn't didn't do anything else. This is a team that probably deserved a little more help from his front office. After an uninspired start, the Flyers haven't just turned things around, scoring, scoring in the playoff position. They've been red hot. They were at 9-0-2. They haven't lost the regulation since the Super Bowl. And with Wayne Simmons' upper body injury, it was extended for his, who has an upper body injury, injured for extended stretch, this was a team that could have sneakily been in on Evander Kane. The bottom six winger would have been fine. Grabner, Maroon, Tatar, name three, and then the Flyers saw a team chasing them with the Devils pick up two of these players. The division-leader Penguins only got stronger 
as well as Bessard. Meanwhile, Philadelphia is left with with what has. Uh, is, meanwhile, Philadelphia is left with what is what it has, and is must hope that it's enough to stay in its run. Ken Holland had a uh, both a great and a bad um, trade deadline. The general manager should have been selling low to Tar. <coughs> The Wiggers' production is down significantly in points since per 60 minutes at 5-5 five five from last season. His deal of $5.3 million three years is too much for his, most teams to take on. Not only did Holland find a part, willing partner in the Golden Knights, but Holland made out like a bandit with a first-rounder, a second-rounder, and a third-rounder. Yes, the first-round pick in 2018 will be low considering the Golden Knights' goal record this season, but we were impressed with this team most as much. But the Detroit Red Wings had one of the few decent defensemen available in Mike Green. Several teams like the Bruins, the Lightning, the Leafs, the Capitals were in strong need of defensemen <coughs> at the deadline. And somehow, Holland couldn't find a taker. Now, Green will likely walk away in free agency in Detroit. In the process of a long rebuild, they'll re recruit nothing. Part of this is the circumstance. Green hasn't played since he suffered a neck injury on February, February 15th against the Tampa Bay Lightning. <coughs> Even still, it's, unfortunate, it's an unfortunate turn for a team that is stranded by big contracts. With a great offseason for Kevin Chernoff, we expect a big surprise out of Winnipeg, usually. Chernoff, the Jets general manager, has put his staff on the team, more through the draft than through the making trades, but this was a big old swing for the fences deal. Not only is it a deal that within a division that a team is still contending in the playoffs, that's not an easy trade to make, regardless of the itchy trigger figure of frustrated Blues general manager Doug Armstrong. Chadoff also deserves credit for building a contender more through the draft, where he could use more easily part with a first-round pick and a quality first prospect than Eric Foley. I should get Winnipeg's general manager some serious street cred as he puts his team in a better position to contend. Thumbs up to Pierre Doran. He doesn't have to be, to be known as the general manager who traded away Eric Carlson yet. Maybe it happens in a few months, but getting through the deadline without dealing the popular star probably bought a collective style of relief in Ottawa. Sends fans who don't have much to be excited about right now, and there's no telling what happens next, but the, the Paul Pier, but Paul over Ottawa had Carlson being dealt would have been difficult for everyone to get through. Now the Senators could make a less rushed decision about the long-term future of the franchise. I doubt Doran has slipped... Um, so that, uh, um, the Maple Leafs did not have a good off-seat trade deadline. I don't have a problem with the Leafs being a little quieter at the deadline, adding only Thomas Plakatic. But it's been going awfully hard. It's been getting awfully hard to make a run based on what we've seen for the Lightning and the Bruins. Toronto's still a relatively early stage of an ascent, so not trying to keep up with the Titans of the division is probably the right call. But it's gonna be a grind. Um. The Sabres, according to ESPN, were losers. Um, um, unless the Shark... Um, Botterill told reporters that at the deadline, he they received only one legit offer from Kane. So I can't really say it's his fault. It's Botterill's fault. I get why fans are frustrated, but I can't really say it's Botterill's fault. I think... I think we should be patient with Botterill. It's a first-year general manager, but I know patience is a word Sabres fans really don't want to hear. Devils had a good offseason, a good trade deadline, excuse me. They were expected to be in the Metropolitan Division mix this next season, but here they are, bars the deadline. They are currently to sit in the top of the wild scout spot, 92 points. Uh, they got Gradner and Maroon. Both wingers bring a ton of speed and scoring, and the acquisition only contributes and the acquisitions only accumulate the cost of New Jersey, a second rounder, and a third rounder, and a pair of prospects. When you consider that Ryan Hartman cost what, not, what when, you, when you consider what Ryan Hartman cost Nashville, uh, those look um, a first rounder or more. Those look like a phenomenal gets, particularly when the grabber gets the move. Um, Tampa Bay and and Steve Eisenman were winners. Um, Tampa Bay is loaded. They they lead the league with 7, 87 points at the trade deadline, and they got Ryan McDonough and JT Miller. They are stacked. 